Thank you for joining Next Labs. Today's topic, we will be discussing the Outlook Enforcer. The case summary, actions against the emails. The key features are doing enforcement based on user attribute and resource attributes. The following are part of those key features. Hidden data removal, reject unless silent override, Outlook itself hierarchical classification, and X header hierarchical classification. test data for this demonstration. In this particular demonstration, we'll be using this demo data list, which consists of user information for five different users from different departments with different licenses, as well as document information of different types of documents with different attributes associated with those particular documents. In our first use case, use case A, we will be doing enforcement based on user attribute and resource attributes. The business case in this scenario is that HR can't send out a file if it's a confidential ITAR file. Here we have Lucy who tries to send out a confidential document to Derek in this scenario. The email should be blocked and Lucy should get a message. So in this case, she's going to be looking at her Word doc, looking at the advanced properties. And in this case, we see it's ITAR as well as confidential, both set to yes for the values. Lucy attaches that email and now sends that off to Derek. As you will see in the bottom right-hand corner, we will see the message saying that that particular file can't be sent because it's going outside of that department. In our next case, use case B, we will cover hidden data removal. The business case in this scenario is that the Outlook enforcer will remind HR to remove hidden data when he or she is sending it out of the department. Here we will have Lucy once again sending an email out to Derek, who is in the QA department. She's attaching a particular document, in this case an HR document. As we did in the first use case, we'll open up this Word doc. Take a look at the particular properties, and in this case we will see that there is hidden data within this Word doc. Lucy will now try to send this document to Derek. The document inspector from Next Labs will now look at it. And then the policy assistant will come up and ask Lucy if she wants to remove any of these particulars that are on this document, in this case, comments, revisions, and versions and annotations. So she can click the remove all button, which will remove those out, say okay. And now in this scenario, that document will then be sent to Derek with all of those annotations taken out. Here we're on Derek's email. He's now opening up Lucy's email with the attachment. The Word document opens. He enables editing within that Word doc, and we'll see that there's no annotations to the right. The second scenario, Lucy's now sending the email to Devin, who does work in HR. In this case, the email should be sent out directly without being prompted to take the annotations out since it's within the department. As we can see, Devin has received the email He'll now be able to open that Word document up. As we can see, once he enables editing, that those comments are listed on the right-hand side. In our next use case, use case C, Outlook, this will be hierarchical classification. So the business case here is that classifying document if it's sent out and it's of type ITAR. So here we have Lucy sending an attachment to Derek, and in this case it's asking it to 
remind Lucy to classify the doc. So in this case, she's classifying as an ITAR doc and saying that's the property, setting it to yes. So now the document has been classified. In the second part of our use case, Lucy will send a document out attached to Derek again, but in this case, it's a normal document and won't be looking for her or reminding her to do a classification on that document. So here we will see she'll send that document. We can see by looking in Lucy's inbox that that document was sent to Derek, but in this instance, she was not prompted to classify the document since it wasn't an ITAR file that she was trying to send to Derek. It was a type normal. In our next use case, use case D, we'll be covering X header hierarchical classification. The business case in this scenario is to classify an email if it's being sent out and it's an ear file. So here we will see in this scenario, Lucy once again is sending out a document attached to an email to Derek. In this case, she's being prompted by Next Labs Enforcer to actually put a classification in here. So in this case, we're picking ear and properties for ear are ear 01 and 2. In our last use case, use case E, this will cover reject unless silent override. The business case here is that the user needs to select the recipients again if the license does not match. In the scenario we have above, Derek is being sent an email with an attachment of a 1001 Word doc from Lucy. Derek does have a license of 1001, and that email is then sent. In the second part of our use case, we will now see that Lucy is trying to send the same Word document to both Derek, Sarah, and Susan. We're going to take a look at the advanced properties in the 1001 Word doc and see that under the settings, it does have a name of license and a value of 1001. Here we will now see the document attached and Lucy sending it off. She'll be prompted to select additional recipients that were blocked because they do not have that license, in this case, Susan. She then sends the email, checks her sent folder, and sees that Derek and Sarah are the two people that were listed there. When she does a refresh and looks at who was sent again, in this case, it's just Derek and Susan because Sarah was not selected in a recipient to receive that particular Word doc.